Hey, it's Simon. I wanted to explain to you the technique that I've used for many years to get real insight into a brand situation and into the relationship with their target audience. And it's called Standing in the Shoes of the Consumer. And it's based on an NLP technique, that's Neuro Linguistic Programming, developed in the 1970s in California around advanced communication. And this technique is a very simple one and it involves you taking the three important positions in understanding your customer's perspective. Now the first position is here represented by this chair and that is you the brand. The second position is this one here and that's represented by this second chair and that's the consumer. And then behind me is this third chair and that is the observer. And that's a really critical position because it allows the observer to assess the relationship between you, the brand and your customer. And really what this is all about is to gain that insight into what is driving your customer. How can you connect your brand to that customer? Okay, so I'm now going to give you a little demonstration of how that dialogue might work and what role each position and of these seats, when you're sitting in these seats, you would play. I'm now in position one, and that's you representing your brand. And I'm going to talk to your prospective customer about how I believe my brand can support them in their life. And in this case, I'm gonna do it on the basis of this brand coaching course offer that I'm working with you on. As an entrepreneur, I understand that you have to juggle many, many things in your working life. As a first time entrepreneur and often as a solo entrepreneur, you have to do multiple things. You have to do the marketing, you have to do the product development, you have to do the customer service and so on and so on and the finances. And it can be very tough for you to manage all those things. And especially if you have aspirations to build and grow a significant business. One of the most important things if you want to build a successful business is to create a brand. Now, brand building can sometimes feel like it's a mysterious art, but it's no coincidence that some of the most successful businesses and brands in the world spend a huge amount of resources and time in working with their brands and building their brands. But as an entrepreneur, you don't have access to those skills and you certainly don't have access to the budgets that big corporates have. So how do you compete? How do you build a brand? Well, I've spent a whole career working with some of the most respected brands in the world and I understand the techniques and the frameworks that they use to create successful brands. And I've also built my own business. So I understand some of the challenges it is to build a business when you're starting small, but having big aspirations. So my ambition for this course is that you are armed with all the ingredients needed to create a really compelling and meaningful brand to represent your business. So I hope that's something you will consider. Okay, so I'm now in the second position, which is the customer. And I'm now going to try and feed back my response as if I'm a customer listening to what the brand had to say and give back my thoughts about what was being said. Here we go. I was interested in what you had to say um, in that, yes, I'm definitely an entrepreneur who has to juggle so many things to build my business. And yes, I do have aspirations 
and I do worry about how I can break through in what is a very competitive market. So I'm interested in what you say. And certainly I know from looking at the success of brands out there that obviously having a brand is a, is, is a good thing. But the thing I'm unsure about is how does that work for a small business? So you say you worked with big companies, big brands with big budgets, but how can I be sure that those kind of frameworks will work for me with my resources? I haven't got a strong knowledge in marketing and certainly not branding. And I'd be worried that some of these techniques you're talking about might be great for a big brand, but how would they work for me as a small entrepreneur? I think the second thing that you said that I'm interested in is how do I actually how do I actually implement some of this stuff? So, okay, so I go through an exercise with you, but do you help me to implement any of that? I mean, how do I know that's going to be able to affect, in a positive way, my marketing? What about my website? You know, what about the emails I have to send? How will the brand actually make a difference to those things? So really, th those are my key questions. I'm, I'm interested but I've got one or two worries and anxieties about how it would actually work. Okay, well, here I am sat in, in the third position and this is the, the observer. So I've been observing this conversation between the brand and the customer. And now is my opportunity to be the sage, to sit back from this in a very detached way and to observe where the relationship is working and perhaps where it's missing, where is the insight missing. So I guess the first thing I would say is that clearly there, there is a connection here in the sense that there's a customer here who knows they want to achieve something special. They have a lot of passion for their business and they want to achieve something. In that regard, I think what Simon was saying about building a brand struck a chord. And the fact that he has experience of working with some very respected brands is obviously adds to the credibility. So I think in principle, that looks like it could be a good relationship. However, it was also clear that there were some hurdles to overcome. There's a big difference between a big business and a big brand with lots of resources and an individual in terms of what they can achieve. So I think that's perhaps where the gap needs to be, needs to be bridged, is working out how that can work. Final thought might be perhaps what Simon has to do is to think a little bit more about the practicalities of what the customer, the entrepreneur in this case, needs to actually deliver to make their brand work and to work out how the brand frameworks that he's talking about would actually manifest themselves in those things. So that would be my advice. I hope they get it right. So there you go. There's a demonstration of the technique in action. I hope that's of some use. My advice would be to keep practicing, keep going around that circle, and keep noting the insights that you find as you go around that process time after time. As I've said on the course, you can do it yourself or you can ask someone else to play the role of the customer. Indeed, if you've got two friends in this COVID era that you're allowed to have in your, in your home, then obviously two people can do it. Or of course, as some of you are going to do, you can do it virtually. I really hope that's of some help. I'm really looking forward to seeing you in the next session. Stay safe.